you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. Sometimes, for a wish to come true, it takes a kingdom because together is stronger. Tied tight, united we stand in honor of one child's wish to fuel the fire that will grant many more. Join the kingdom. Looking for the best way to get the Major League Baseball games you want to watch? Rogers Super Sports Pack has you covered. With MLB Extra Innings, you'll have a premium ticket to out-of-market regular season games with all games available in HD. Don't miss the action from the games you want from both the American and National Leagues. MLB Extra Innings, part of the Super Sports Pack. For only $35.95 a month, Rogers customers get all this for one all-inclusive price. Order using your remote starting on Channel 431 or visit Rogers.com today. Today, I helped a parent feed their family by connecting them to a food program. Today, I helped someone connect with mental health supports. Today, I helped a couple struggling to pay their bills access financial aid. Every day, 211 Navigators connect Canadians to critical government and community programs and services. 211 Help starts here. Rogers TV, Grand Falls, Windsor. No? Speech, but that's not I can't see the lake. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Diane Ball, and I'm so honored this evening, or this afternoon, I should say, uh, to represent, introduce the X Lakes Valley High graduates of 2023. Bravo, guys.
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. My name is Lily Wicks, and I'm pleased to be your MC for this cap and gown ceremony. At this time, we invite graduate Mackenzie Moores to formally welcome everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to start by welcoming the students, teachers, and fa families here today to share in the celebrating our 2023 graduates. In my time here, I have found that as much as we think we're prepared for our final year of, of school, we're not prepared for how leaving this place will affect us. Although many of us will need to remember the lessons we were taught when we head to college or university, we will choose to remember the incredible memories we made during our time here with our friends and teachers throughout the year. I believe, I can, I believe everyone can agree when I say how overjoyed and proud I am of this year's group of graduates, and I look forward to seeing how far we'll go in the future. So on behalf of the graduating class, we welcome and thank you. Thank you, Mackenzie. Please welcome Mr. Paul Lewis, who will deliver the principal's address. Good afternoon. My name is Paul Lewis. Welcome, graduates, family members, and invited guests. It's always an honor to address students at cap and gown because it's my last opportunity to tell you how I feel and maybe have an impact on how you should view yourselves before you leave for good. And I will miss you. Fun fact, graduation speeches were created basically in the belief that due to the high energy of most high school students, as they graduate and are getting released into the world, they should at least be sedated by a speech first. So about moving on in your life. Anthropologists can tell you what high school graduation is really about. It's an initiation rite. It's a major point of transition which, for those of you who will not go on to college or university, will mark your transition officially into adulthood. For those of you who do go on to college or university, your high school graduation marks a major point of transition with more freedom and more responsibility coming your way. As for your parents, they will also be transitioning, but for them, it's from borderline financial comfort to monthly panic. You, on the other hand, can postpone your transition to adulthood for another five years, or maybe even 10 if you're going to do a path to graduate school. Maybe you don't think of yourself as an adult just yet. Maybe you're wondering when the eternal alarm clock will go off that announces adult here, the world is now free to kick the daylights out of me. Realistically, this transition should be the realization that you are an adult and are now responsible and accountable to move yourself forward in life. If you've already heard the alarm clock, then it's too late to turn back. A lot of students' names are being read out here today and all of you have earned for yourselves something that is enduring and can never be taken away, an education, evidenced by the diploma that will soon be hanging on your wall at home. Be proud that you are here because high school isn't an easy path to navigate. Hopefully you have stayed true to yourself and followed your passions and your beliefs and your goals. Never get caught up in following someone else's dream or someone else's path. Unless, of course, you're in the woods and you're lost, then by all means, yes, you should definitely take that path. In terms of their academic performance, this year's graduates are shining examples of why Exploits Valley High produces students capable of competing on the world stage and excelling. 
A large number of students have again this year received scholarships and awards, and we are extremely proud of their accomplishments. We have an expectation that students will represent us well, and we are never disappointed. Teachers, for their part, have done a wonderful job giving you the tools you need to be successful. More to the point, teachers have provided you with the opportunity to become educated. Information has always been there for the taking. You've all heard the expression, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Very simplistic on the one hand and very profound on the other. The fact that you are here, graduates, means you have chosen to take what was offered to you. It was a conscious choice to learn, a choice that makes you a deliberate success. As principal of Exploits Valley High, you would expect me to tell you how important good grades are for future success, and they are. Good grades will open doors, help you pave the way to meeting future goals, as well as help you gain entrance into a broad range of post-secondary programs. Remember, however, they won't define you. You are so much more than a grade. Think about what motivates you. What do you want to achieve for yourself and for your future family? What do you value most, spiritually, emotionally, the people you surround yourself with? These are the things that will define your success and, yes, make you happy. On the topic of success, it would be naive to think good grades alone will equal success. We know the dictionary is the only place success comes before hard work. As Coco Chanel put it, success is most often achieved by those who don't know that failure is inevitable. Like so many of the world's great leaders and innovators, you too can learn a great deal from failure. Failure promotes, sorry, failure promotes learning when you rise after failure and try again. So never get discouraged. Thanks to people persevering after making mistakes, we now have such medical innovations as penicillin, smallpox vaccine, pacemakers, and yes, even Viagra. It's not the falling down, it's the getting back up. It's the never quit attitude that matter most for success in life. Aaron Sorkin once wrote, remember, you're going to fall down but the world doesn't care how many times you fall down as long as it's one fewer than the number of times you get back up. So, you're graduating from high school and moving on into the world. Many of you to post-secondary and others towards other pursuits. My advice is to be open to change and don't fear it. From a control perspective, you need to be in the driver's seat of your own life. Because if you're not, life will drive you. As those of us who have lived a little know, some days you're the dog, and some days you're the fire hydrant. You take the good with the bad, but be mindful every day to keep moving forward. Most importantly, live your best life. I mean, really live your life. Do all the ambitious things you want to do, like travel, get rich, get famous, innovate, lead, fall in love, make and lose fortunes, swim naked in a wild jungle river. Only after first checking for snakes, piranha, crocodiles, and monkey poop, of course. A second thought, maybe we should scratch that last one that suddenly doesn't sound so safe. As you do these things, to the extent that you can, err in the direction of kindness. Do those things that incline you towards the big questions and avoid the negative things that will reduce you and make you trivial. That brilliant part of you, that thing that exists beyond personality is as bright and shining a light as any that have ever existed. Bright as Shakespeare's, bright as Gandhi's, bright as Mother Teresa's. The best of your ability, sweep away everything that keeps you separate from this bright part of you. As Princess Diana said, carry out a random act of kindness with no expectation of reward, safe in the knowledge that one day someone might do the same for you. I will leave you with the words of George, George Bernard Shaw. 
This is the true joy in life, being used for a purpose, recognized by yourself as a mighty one, being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little cloud of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself to making you happy. I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community, and as long as I live, it is my privilege to do for it what I can. I want to be thoroughly used up when I die, for the harder I work, the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. Life has no brief candle for me. It's a sort of splendid torch, which I have got hold of for the moment, and I want to make burn as brightly as possible, so I'm handing it to future generations. Thank you for your indulgence, and congratulations, graduates. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Now, the time that we've all been waiting for. Family, friends, and of course, graduates. Please welcome our principal, Mr. Paul Lewis, and our vice principal, Mr. Glenn Casey, as they present the diplomas to the first half of the graduating class. We please ask you to hold your applause until all diplomas are presented. Banfield. Benjamin Bannister. Ethan Barker. Amber Barnes. Benjamin Barry. Trinity Barry. Emma Beeson. Nice job on the hat. Aaron Billard. Billings. Hunter Blake. Brianna Blanchard. He's got a picture there. Abigail Blunden. Chloe Bowers. <laughs> Adrian Brown. Haley Budgel. Angie Boosnick. Boosnick. That's it. It's too late. Riley Burden. <laughs> Benjamin Cameron. Hope Byrne.
Borden Chapman. Nathan Campbell. Marshall Cook. Jenna Churchill. <laughs> Joshua Davis. Faith Davis. Makoya Din. Xavier Davis. Jasmine Drover. Michael Down. Dennis Finale. Abigail Duto. <laughs> Hillary Finn. Cassidy Finley. Evan Fudge. <laughs> Ethan Flood. Noah Gardner. Hannah Fudge. Jacob Gregory. Adam Green. Jenna Grushi. Logan Grimes. Hang on. Sarah Grushi. Kieran Hamill. Michael Hart. Alexander Hancock. Hannah Hemian. Adam Hedges. <laughs> McKenna Hewitt. Paige Hennessy. Lily Hillier. Christopher Higgins. Samuel Hewlin. Samuel Hiscock.
Thank you, Mr. Lewis and Mr. Casey. Next, we would like to welcome Abby Pittman on stage as she performs the song she wrote herself called Blink of an Eye. So I sat down last week and I figured I'd write my own song because I couldn't really find one I wanted to perform and I was just trying to think of what the message I wanted to get across was and I think I just concluded that it's nice for us all to just come together for one last time while still remembering all the good times we've shared together and the things we've gone through. So as we're sitting here today, parents, graduates, everyone, just remember we all got here. We're here now. Doesn't matter the challenges we faced or anything, we're, we're here now and that's what matters. Our time has come to an end, but the memory still remains. A blink of an eye, grades of three to grade nine, have somehow graduated.
challenges we faced, obstacles we overcame. None of it's gone to waste. Relationships we built, laughing to the hilt, and living day to day. Now here we are on our last leg of the race, and it's bittersweet, sour. Thank you, Abby, for your wonderful song. Now we are pleased to welcome Mr. Dave Knoll, who will present a tribute to the graduates. Good evening, parents, guardians, distinguished guests, staff, and of course you, the Exploits Valley High graduating class of 2023. Woo! You're here, finally. Well, originally I thought Ms. Brown had said that there was a roast of the students, and, but actually it's a toast, so some of you are a bit off the hook. Um, Greener, where are you? It's just making sure you're here. Good to go. Seriously, though, this is time to celebrate you, our grads, and your time spent in school. It's truly impossible to compress 12 years of school into two minutes or less, but I'll try. First of all, I want to apologize uh, for making you think with me for the last time. Think about your 12 years of school, all 2,535 days of it that you've just spent. Yeah, you spent 2,535 days in school. Well, we just think about our three years at EVH. Only a blink, right? Told you so. It's only going to be a blur. Seems like you just arrived, and now you're headed out the door as graduates. You showed up at our door as grade 10 students, like deer in the headlights. That was a time of utter confusion, blended with an uneasy excitement, thinking of, you know, where are you going to eat? How could you figure out the bathrooms? And how was it ever possible to get from the bottom floor to the top floor in that short time between classes and not get a late slip? Because you knew five late slips got you an extra hour with the old guy, perhaps, right? You know. How stressful were those first couple days at EVH? Quickly, you adjusted to a big new building, its layout, its staff, one knoll with hair, one knoll without hair. And of course, a new way of learning, fast-paced, combined with seemingly endless amounts of homework, overwhelming, you thought, Wild, wasn't it? Tossing the newest and bigger stressor in your young lives, the possibility of failing, of course. Who? But you learned. You learned to work harder. You learned to pay more attention to detail. You learned to manage your time more effectively. You grew academically. Though this thing called COVID tossed a wrench into all of our plans, you showed us how adaptable you are. Another fantastic characteristic in a student. Through all of this, you persevered. And now, seemingly in the blink of an eye, you're all here at your graduation ceremony. How many times were you reminded in high school that these years would float by? No time for a nap. Got to get the homework done. Lots of time to sleep when? Right on. You learned something. You got the message. In these past three years, our graduates have outdone themselves on so many levels. 
scholarships and bursaries are plenty. Trophies and banners and plaques abound. The number of blood donors has increased significantly. It's a sh shameless plug on my behalf. Tech gizmos galore, music and drama accolades too numerous to quantify, and most importantly, memories by the millions were made. Ah, those memories. I'm sure Adam and Sarah will remember the days of the little reminder taps, right? Got to get it done. Memories. As a collective group, you've matured into a caring, compassionate, and generous group of young adults. This is very evident by your commitment to many school and community-based events. Your befriending of our foreign students has been nothing less than amazing. Leadership activities, partnered with social action events, illustrate your commitment to others. And we, the adults in your lives, thank you in advance for what you will do in the future. So, you see, if you've been listening to me for the last time, no, no crying, because it's the last little rant of mine, <laughs> you know how it goes, you will see that you, the grads, have grown, not only physically, but socially, emotionally, mentally, over these past three years. Your ability to deal with life's unending problems and complexities have been now been made forever easier, and I'm just blinded by staring at that light, hold on, have been made forever easier all too well by all you've done in school, including all of those extra math problems. Mr. Hicks asked me to put that in there. But anyway, seriously though, think of all the coping mechanisms you've developed over the past three years. Too many to count. And we, your teachers, have watched you develop these needed strategies, but we won't include hanging out in the washroom down on the bottom floor as one of them. And I won't name names. As a staff, we, your teachers at EVH, want you to roll up these past three years of school. Thank you. <laughs> Talk all that life and its lessons into your tool belt for life and never lose that belt. Keep that belt close to your heart. And these three years will aid you in ways you'll never foresee. Additionally, we hope that you, our young eagles, remember your times when you needed help in school and you got that help and in the future, pay it forward in whatever you do and wherever you go. Karma is cool. So in trying to be short and sweet and not usually old and long-winded, myself and the staff at Exploits Valley High want to say congratulations to each and every one of you who are graduating here this evening. Our very diverse and absolutely amazing class of 2023, Fly Eagles Fly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Knoll. Please join me in welcoming graduate Declan Tibbs to the podium for a tribute to the teachers. Talk to your teachers in the hallway. Forget everything that happened between bells in a classroom. Well, not everything, that won't get you very far. But aside from every equation or essay, remember hallway conversations with your teachers. High school teachers teach their most important lessons beyond the classroom door, whether it be the first check-in after a long weekend, sharing tears, happy or sad, over news, good or bad, they are the ones there for it all. As we exit the most pivotal stage of our lives, they were the few that walked us through it. We walked into high school as strangers to who we have become today. A teacher's job consists of so much more than just the surface level of finishing a curriculum or pumping out a class full of A-plus students. They are molding human beings to throw into the world. It takes a complete superhero to become a teacher. 
I don't think these fine folks that stand before us today will ever understand the impact they've had on us. You are all an inspiration for so many of us, even the math department. <laughs> Every single one of us strives for your approval and looks up to you whether they'll admit it or not. Personally, through my three years here, there were several times where a teacher has saved my life. Between academic or social burnout, we wear the wire so thin sometimes the words of validation brings us off the ledge. Coming out of the pandemic, we had the first normal high school experience in three years. Hence, we gripped every single thing that came our way so tightly in fear of losing everything again. Holding ourselves so far ahead of the curve that the curve became a sphere. But that's where teachers fall into place once again to tell us that in the end, everything will be okay, and if it's not okay, it's not the end. That brings me back to hallway conversations. You won't remember the math test you flunked in grade 10 or the novel you slept through in grade 11. What you'll remember is asking Mr. Power how the cabin trip was over the long weekend, chatting up the recent hockey game with Mr. Olford, debriefing the last Taylor Swift album with Ms. Clark, getting movie recommendations off Mr. Sims and Ms. Ivany, or asking Ms. Hancock which tropical island she's heading off to this weekend. I'm so proud of every single one of us as we start the newest chapter of our lives, but we have to credit those who helped us write the last one. I can't leave here today without thanking one specific teacher who helped me through high school more than anyone I've ever met. She always pushed me to my full potential. She was always a shoulder to cry on, and she was always my biggest supporter, and that was Miss Jennifer Clark. Please stand and help me give a hand to the incredible teachers of Exploits Valley High. Thank you, Declan. Today we are celebrating the academic success of EVH graduate students. At this time, Mr. Lewis and Mr. Casey will present the graduation certificates to the second half of the graduating class. Again, we please ask for all applause to be held until the end. Emma Jenkins. Oh, this is not on. Emma Jenkins. Brianna Ings. Madison Kendall. Emily Kelly. Riley Kirby. Matthew Kinsella. Dakota Langdon. Ethan Lane. Michaela Loader. Patrick Lewis. There we go. Katie Lush. Nathan Luscombe. Deidre Liver. Sarah Lynch.
Jack McCarty. Joshua McDonald. Carmen McDonald. Lorenzo Madonna. Timothy Mercer. Seth Martin. Olivia Milley. Lily Mercer. Claire Monette. Brady Mitchell. Tyrell Maroney. Mackenzie Moores. Chloe O'Keefe. Amber Murray. Christopher Olford. Joshua Oak. Jamie Party. Christopher Party. Nathan Parsons. Felicity Parsons. Rebecca Peddle. Preston Patey. Claire Pierce. Deidre Penny. Connor Pike. Carter Piercy. Abigail Pittman. Maria Pinson. Eve Prince. Evan Pittman. Sarah Ralph. Dave Pin. It's 
Is it me? Ethan Roberts. Thomas Reed. Taylor Roberts. Ryan Roberts. Relax. Katie Sellers. Ryan Russell. William Short. Nicholas Sharp. Caleb Small. Connor Skinner. Evan Smith. Ava Smith. Wyatt Snow. Yeah! Curtis Smith. Jada Stag. Liam Squire. Natalie Strickland. Jake Stag. Chloe Temple. <clears throat> Caitlin Tarrant. Skylar Tucker. Declan Tibbs. Ian Wall. Samantha Walburn. Pram Wah. Emma Warford. You want to get up here? <laughs> Brady Wells. Leah Ware. Ross Whiffen. Chantel Wells. Rebecca Young. Lily Wicks.
Zane Wicks. Thank you. Let's give everyone a proper round of applause. My God. Thank you, Mr. Lewis and Mr. Casey. And thank you, Ms. Hogue and Mr. Snow for announcing all the lovely graduates. Next, we welcome Ms. Clark to lead singers Emma Warford, Eve Prince, Sam Hewlin, Jenna and Sarah Grushi, and Kieran Hamill as they perform the song Vienna.
Thank you, Ms. Clark and all the wonderful singers involved. We welcome Wyatt Snow to come forward and read a tribute to the parents, followed by Mrs. Carolyn Snow, who will read a tribute to the graduates. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm standing here today not only to commemorate the other students for a congressional celebration, but to say a warming thank you to mine and every parent out there. For every year and step of the way through school, you parents helped us. You guided us through darkness and brought us light. You showed us affection when we were down. You showed us pride and compassion even when we achieved something small. When we were happy, you were happy. When we cried, you learned our sorrow and seemed to make everything feel okay. You parents are the reason why we all strive to be who we truly wanted to be. I hope we all understand that whatever we do, our parents gave us this opportunity to grow and discover as human beings. As the school years came to an end, I encourage everyone to reflect on what memories that we've accomplished. We have developed an independent people with a new chapter in our lives that we have to discover ourselves. So now, parents must pass the torch on to us to see what our future holds. Thank you. I am here as a mom of a 2023 graduate. I find myself standing here experiencing numerous emotions. Sadness that my little boy is all grown up and ready to explore the world on his own. Happiness to see the young man we have raised, the wonderful young man. But mostly, and I'm sure I speak for all the parents out here today, when I say how proud we are of the young people you have all become. Since the day you were born, we have had big hopes and dreams for your futures. We have seen you through all your milestones, from your first steps to your first words, your first day of school to the first, day, first time you rode a bike on your own, each new thing you learn with excitement and curiosity. As we celebrate the closing of this chapter in your lives, another one opens. Whether you choose to continue your education or whether you choose to enter the workforce, big changes are, upon the, are on the horizon. You are all your own stories waiting to be written. Only you can write the narrative. We know you will continue to accomplish the goals and dreams you have set for yourselves as the years go by. Never lose sight of those dreams and never compromise anything to reach them. You are all officially high school graduates about to embark on the biggest adventure of your lives. As parents, we want our children to reach their full potential and to make good decisions. Never lose your drive to succeed, and you will do great things. You just have to believe in yourselves. This milestone is not about growing up. It's about growing as a person. We encourage you to remember that life is made up of a lot of small journeys. But regardless of the paths you choose, always find something that makes you happy. Show gratitude for the people who helped get you where you are today. Surround yourself with people who remind you how amazing you are. And finally, no matter what life throws at you or where you go, never forget where you came from, and home will always be here. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. 
Thank you, Wyatt and Mrs. Snow. At this time, we would like you to welcome graduate Abby Duteau, who's this year's valedictorian. My name is Abigail Duto, and I'm a part of the graduating class of 2023. Today marks a significant moment in our lives. As we gather here to celebrate our graduation, we reflect upon the countless memories, challenges, and triumphs that have shaped our journey. It is an honor to stand before you as a valedictorian of this remarkable class, representing the hopes, dreams, and achievements of every one of us. First and foremost, I want to express my heartfelt gratitude to the teachers, administrators, and staff who have guided us throughout our academic endeavors. Your unwavering dedication, passion, and commitment to our growth have been truly inspiring. You have nurtured our minds, encouraged our creativity, and instilled in us a passion for knowledge. Your tireless efforts have empowered us to new heights and prepared us for the challenges that lie ahead. Next, I want to acknowledge the never-ending support that we've received from our families and our loved ones. Your love, encouragement, and sacrifices have been the bedrock to our success. You have been there during moments of uncertainty, celebrated our achievements, and provided strength and belief in ourselves when we needed them most. Today, we stand here not only as graduates, but as your proud children. As we reflect upon our time in school, we realize it was not just about the textbooks, assignments, and grades. It was about the friendships we forged, the experiences we shared, and the growth we accomplished together. We have grown not only as individuals, but as a tightly knit community. We have laughed, cried, and celebrated together. Our collective spirit has fostered an environment of inclusivity, support, and empathy. Let us carry the spirit into the world, ensuring that we build communities where everyone is valued and expected. However, graduation is not just an endpoint, but a beginning. We find ourselves on the leading edge of endless possibilities and limitless potential. Each one of us possesses unique talents, passions, aspirations, and it is our responsibility to use them to make a positive impact on the world. Embracing the challenge that awaits us may seem daunting, but let us remember the resilience, perseverance, and adaptability we have honed throughout our educational journey. We are equipped with the skills and knowledge to overcome any hurdle that comes our way. Let us approach the future with confidence, knowing that we are prepared to face whatever lies ahead. Finally, I want to leave you with a quote from Neil Gaiman, who said, and now go and make interesting mistakes, make amazing mistakes, make glorious and fantastic mistakes, break rules, leave the world more interesting for your being here. Congratulations, class of 2023. Today we celebrate our achievements, but tomorrow we embark on a journey to leave an indelible mark on the world. May our collective endeavors be filled with success, fulfillment, and a commitment to making a difference. Thank you. Thank you, Abby, and congratulations on becoming valedictorian. Please welcome Chloe O'Keefe to read the acknowledgement on behalf of the school community at this time. Good afternoon, everyone. First off, I'd just like to say how proud I am of my whole class for making it through and finally graduating. I'm also very happy to, to be graduating alongside all of you. Since we're nearing the end of the ceremony, I'd just like to acknowledge everyone who has made themselves a part of this cap and gown ceremony in any way. Starting with the town of Grand Falls, Windsor, thank you for allowing the use of multiple storage spaces around town. And thank you to the staff of Joburn Stadium, and especially Mr. Tom Mercer, for all their support with the ceremony today. To every parent that has helped with our graduation, thank you from all of the graduates. None of this would have been possible without you. 
Of course, I'd also like to acknowledge all the teachers and faculty at X Whites Valley High for always guiding us and making sure we made it to graduation. To the grad steering committee, thanks for all your extra hours you put in for planning this year's grad and for being the voice of the student body. Also, a big thank you to Rogers TV for streaming today's ceremony for some who could not make it or would just like to view the ceremony at home. Finally, I'd like to thank all of those here today who participated in the cap and gown ceremony and made it an event that we'll always remember. Happy graduation. Thank you, Chloe. Thank you all for coming to this afternoon to celebrate the wonderful students of XYZ Valley High. Before you leave, graduates come to the front of the stage for photos and a hat toss. Before dismissal, there are fewer reminders to parents and graduates. Graduates are to meet at Churchill Park tomorrow at 4 p.m. to take pictures with other graduates. Motorcade will begin to form in front of Windsor Pentecostal Church at 5.30 p.m. and will leave at 6 p.m. The dance will start at the end of the motorcade. Parents, please reserve the front row of the parking lot for graduates. And finally, Doris EVH Gym open for guests at 5.30 p.m. Thank you. As Lily mentioned, the grads can make their way to the front of the stage for pictures. Parents, you can take pictures. Once you're all in place, if you like a countdown to toss your hat so I can do that for you. Everybody, when you're in position by the front of the stage, turn around and face your parents. All right, guys. Hello. Testing. All right, when you guys are ready, turn and face your parents. You ready to toss your hats? Have you got your name on your hat? Okay, well, the blank one with no name, that's yours. On the count of three, graduates, 2023, one, two, Three.
and about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. I was born and raised in Musqueam First Nation territory by my mother who spoke Hunt Kaminam to me. As a child, I ceased using my mother tongue as to use any language other than English was considered not being Canadian, so I was told. The old people came to me in a dream and reminded me of who I am and where I come from. I have reawakened. My roots are strong and I'm no longer a silent speaker. My language tells me where I'm from. It defines me and guides me to teach others to learn and understand our culture and tradition. A gift for those in the present and the unborn generation. What was lost is found. What was asleep has awakened. My blood is here and I am complete. I have returned home. Sometimes for a wish to come true, it takes a kingdom because together is stronger. Tied tight, united we stand in honor of one child's wish to fuel the fire that will grant many more. Join the kingdom. Rogers TV, Grand Falls, Windsor. <coughs> Hold on. <coughs> Sorry, I'm late. <coughs> Welcome to another episode of Spotlight. I'm your tour guide, Ian Gordon. Sorry I'm late. Producer Leah said we had a great show lined up, so it took a little bit longer packing my bag. Today we're going to Gander to see and hear about the announcement from Come From Away with the provincial government in the town of Gander. And then we're going to Cornerbrook to hear about a conference on technology called Connecting the Dots. But first we're gonna start in Grand Falls, Windsor, listening to a segment on mental health. Uh, just a second. Yeah? Yeah? What? No. Oh. So they're tape segments. I'm not flying. That would have been good to know. Uh, just a sec. While I talk to producer Lydia and get the things sorted out, let's see what they have to say about mental health in Grand Falls, Windsor. But. But who's going to pay for the speedo? Amy, what is mental health? What is mental health? That's a great question. So mental health really um, can look like any number of things, uh, but what we characterize it as is a state of balance when you're looking at the different aspects of your life. Um, so, you know, things like physical health, uh, social life, economic status, things like that. So when we're looking at mental health and talking about things being in balance, when we feel that they're in balance, we feel like we have a state of control. And it allows us to be able to deal with daily stresses, be productive, and just feel like we have power in our lives. Uh, one thing that I do want to note about uh, mental health is that it is a spectrum. So it ranges from poor to positive and we can fall along that line any point in our lives. Um, there is no health without mental health as well. Um, we want to make sure that we take care of our mental health just like our physical health, something that we have to take care of and protect. And um, when it comes to mental health as well, I want to note that if you're experiencing poor mental health, that's not the same thing as experiencing a diagnosable mental illness. Uh, there is a differentiation between those terms. Um, so we want to notice that uh, even if someone does have a poor uh, diagnosable mental illness, um, they can experience positive mental health and very often do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And what are some activities that can help with mental health? Great question. 
So there's a lot of things that we can do. We have a lot of activities at our disposal. So things that we can do to take care of our mental health is things like being purposeful with our actions, making sure that we're doing things for ourselves that we enjoy. Um, so we can do things like journaling, expressing our feelings. We can take care of some hobbies, do things for us that don't come along with any pressure or expectation or things like that. Uh, when mental health becomes a crisis, what direction should the person who's experiencing that crisis go? So first thing that you want to do is if you are experiencing a mental health crisis, you can always reach out to the mental health crisis line. That's a 24-hour service and that's available at 1-888-737-4668. So you want to reach out to a mental health professional, of course, um, and talk to people. It's so important that we talk to one another, we be open with each other about how we're feeling, and then we can help one another, be kind to each other, and be there. Amy, what are some activities, and I'll say easy activities, but what are some activities that are right in front of people that could, could assist them with their mental health and a on a daily basis? On a daily basis, certainly. So, uh, like I said, um, you know, doing things purposefully for yourself, um, you know, picking up a hobby, um, Collecting positive memories, I think, is something that's also important, especially in times like these when we're surrounded with so much negativity and stress. Um, so, you know, thinking about times when you were in a state of positive mental health and remembering what that feeling was like uh, so that you can kind of ground yourself and get back into the swing of things. Amy, positive mental health doesn't just happen. What are some ways we can encourage positive mental health? Certainly. So I really just want to note that, of course, like you said, it doesn't just happen. It's something that we have to work at. It's something that we have to take care of. Just like physical health, you're not going to, you know, run a marathon tomorrow. You've got to build up to that, right? So same thing with mental health. So, you know, doing things, like I say, purposefully with meaning for yourself, taking good care of yourself. Um, you know, uh, good self-care can involve things like uh, picking up a hobby, journaling, exercise, um, just doing things that you enjoy without expectation or any pressure on there. Um, I think a really good thing as well to encourage positive mental health is being aware of the supports that are in your community so that should you be experiencing poor mental health, you know where to turn. So I do want to mention that there's uh, doorways here in town uh, that people can avail of and as well the uh, peer support line through channel. And of course on our website at cmhanl.ca we have all of our resources listed and lots of tips and things like that too. Joining us now is Byron Boyd. Byron is e-mental health coordinator with Central Health. Thank you for coming in, Byron. No problem. Byron, when it comes to mental health these days, a lot of people talk about Bridge the Gap. Can you discuss that with us and tell us what it's all about? Sure, absolutely. Bridge the Gap is the Provincial Mental Health and Addiction Services resource website. Um, essentially, it's a site available to any citizen of Newfoundland and Labrador who wants to access information about mental health and addiction issues, uh, who, anybody who wants to access a complete service directory for the province. So we have our service directory done by region. So for people here in central Newfoundland, they can just click on central health, or yeah, central, and they will receive a listing of the services in our region. Uh, then there's also our whole suite of online services. So we have a, a whole dedicated set of services that are completely online for our citizens. They can simply go to the website, click through to the service that they want to use, uh, and gain free access to that service. I will say that last year we had about 49,000 unique users go through Bridge the Gap. Brian, when it comes to mindfulness, is a term often used now when it comes to mental health. Can you talk about that as well? Sure, absolutely. So on, on the website we have several services that are really dedicated to the practice of mindfulness. And anybody looking for uh, those types of services, that type of activity, can s just simply go to the website. It's bridge the gap with two ps.ca uh, and simply navigate to the online program section. Head on there you will find our 30 day mindfulness challenge. And essentially that challenge sets people up with 30 days of daily mindfulness activities. Takes between five and ten minutes a day to complete, um, but all the person really has to do is navigate through, click, you just need an email address to sign up, uh, and then you'll get daily email or text reminders to go on and complete the activity. The activities are all video based, they're all narrated, so they all have music and, and messaging in them, 
and they teach you the basic skills of mindfulness. That includes like mindful breathing, um, really a bit mindful thought, focusing on the here and now and not getting caught up in racing or fleeting thoughts people will say. And it really gives you that opportunity in a really short time span, five, 10 minutes a day is not very much, um, to really focus on a practice that really works for a lot of people in terms of their mental health. Um, I will say that the challenge starts every Tuesday. So if you sign up between Wednesday and Monday, you'll get started on that Tuesday. And you can also sign up with a buddy. So you can ask a friend of yours if they want to do it with you and you can just simply put their email address in and they'll also get the activities for that 30 days. Sounds good. So you're getting a, a lot of uptake on this program, which is, which is good. And people uh, are availing of the opportunity. Uh, Byron, when it comes to Bridge the Gap, there are some other uh, options available. What might, might, what might they be? Absolutely. So when it comes to mindfulness, the other service that really has specifics to mindfulness is our therapy assistance online program. We call it TAO for short. Um, and we have a self-help library for that. And essentially in that self-help program, there's an entire section dedicated to mindfulness. Again, it's the same concept. It's video-based activities that individuals can sign up for. Uh, you watch a short video that kind of teaches you the skills and kind of helps you understand how to practice mindfulness. This one is set up a little bit different where you kind of have access to the full set of videos and when you log in, you can kind of decide, I'm gonna watch one, I'm gonna watch two. They teach you about how to take a mindful walk. They teach you about how to have a, a, a mindful 10 minutes at home. Um, so there's all kinds of options for users on there. Again, that program is the same thing. You simply click on the online program section on the website you click on sign up for self-help. All you need is an email address. You sign up probably takes about 45 seconds. Uh, and once you're signed up, you have full access to that mindfulness library as well as all the other resources in TAS Self-Help, which includes all kinds of activities about different mental health uh, concerns. And Byron, these services are available seven days a week, 365 days a year? Absolutely, they are completely online. And I will say that these services are available through organizations that we partner with from a provincial perspective. So it's important for people to actually go through Bridge the Gap to get to them. If you just Google 30 Day Mindfulness Challenge, for example, you will get a website, but it'll ask you for a credit card. But if you go through Bridge the Gap, we've taken care of that. All you have to do is sign up. It's free of charge for all citizens in Newfoundland and Labrador. That was a great segment. If you or anyone you know is struggling with their mental health, please have them reach out. There are plenty of resources here on the island and the Bridge the Gap app is a great one. So now we're gonna head to Gander and hear about the provincial government and Gander's announcement for Come From Away coming back next year. Twenty-five years ago, I moved to Appleton, uh, and this district greeted me with open arms and hospitality. Uh, not long after that, uh, 21 years ago, um, uh, Gander played host. Gander and the area, Lewisport, Norris Arm, uh, Gambo, all those communities played host uh, without warning to something that was really a kind of world-changing event. Uh, and it's uh, fitting here that we are here again uh, and I'd want to introduce at this stage our Premier, uh, Dr. Andrew Fury, uh, who has a really exciting announcement. Premier. This is a very special day. Uh, who doesn't remember where they were on 9-11? I mean, the very mention of it brings memories, I'm sure, fresh uh, to your brain, as it does for mine, about exactly where you were, exactly what you were doing and the images of planes landing here in Gander and how they became a fabric of the story uh, to be told, not just for Newfoundland and Labrador, but for the world. Uh, from a moment, a historic human moment of tragedy, epic, historic tragedy, a story, our story emerged, a story of resilience, a story of tolerance, a story of hope, and a story that reflects who we are as Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. I saw Come From Way for the first time on Broadway during the opening week. And I can tell you the only thing 
more full than my heart was my eyes. I don't know a single Newfoundlander and Labradorian who's seen this production who hasn't been moved to tears. Because the story, again, is more than one of tragedy, although it is that. It's more of one than hope, although it is that too. For us here, it is who we are. It is the spirit of this place. It is the secret sauce that so many other provinces look to, to see what makes us different, to see what makes us special, to see what truly it is to be a Newfoundlander and Labradorian. I knew at that moment when I saw it on Broadway that this story would have significant legs because it's a story that touches so many people. It's a story that needed to be shared and was shared with the rest of the world, celebrated around the world, recognized with multiple awards, multiple sold out audiences, and still continuing. But as we celebrated around the world, we knew that this beacon of hope, this story of positive light, is more important now, perhaps, in these times of global uncertainty than ever before. This story will live on well beyond the immediate history of 9-11, because this story is one of the human spirit. And although we're happy to share our Newfoundland and Labrador spirit with the world, we do want it to come home here to Gander. So today, today I'm happy to announce that Come From Away will be coming home to Gander, Newfoundland, starting next year. A homegrown version of the Broadway hit musical will be housed right here on the main stage at the Gander Arts and Culture Center beginning next summer. We have a video uh, from uh, David and Irene, uh, and uh, I'd like to introduce that simply by way of saying uh, they couldn't uh, do this directly, but here they are. Hi, I'm Irene Sankoff. And I'm David Hyde. And we're the writers of Come From Away. We are thrilled to share the news that the very first licensed production in North America will be produced in the place where it all started our second home of Gander, Newfoundland. When we first started workshopping Come From Away, we thought the Canadian high school students might be forced to do it. But what we've seen instead is that this story of incredible kindness and generosity has resonated with people on Broadway, on the West End in London, and around the world. And we've seen fans of the show from around the world travel to Gander to experience it firsthand. So it means the world to be bringing a homegrown production of our show back to Gander in the Arts and Culture Center, where we first listened to interviews in 2011. So when we sing You Are Here, this will be the only production of Come From Away in the world where it will be true. We are thrilled also that this production will be helmed by our friend and the acclaimed Newfoundland director, Jillian Kiley. Jill was at our very first workshop, and she has been a huge champion of the show throughout its entire development, and a champion of all Canadian works and Canadian artists, so we couldn't be happier. We'd like to thank Premier Fury, the province, the town of Gander, the Arts and Culture Centre, Michael Rivenoff, and everyone who supported this new homegrown production, and we can't wait to see it. We're so sorry that we can't be there tonight, but we are thrilled that we will be there on opening night next summer in Gander. Uh, I'd now like to call uh, Mayor Farwell, uh, His Worship, uh, to the stand to uh, say a few words. Percy. And this is a great announcement for for the town of Gander, for the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, and for anybody who's interested in promoting kindness in the world, uh, that this story keeps getting told. And, and of course, as the Premier referenced, there will be certainly significant uh, economic benefit to this region as a result of this story being told here in the coming, hopefully, many, many years. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, this is about a very horrific, uh, this was all precipitated by a very horrific thing. So the whole the whole celebration of it is a little bittersweet, but uh, I think you know uh, the, the the fact that that the telling of this story, that it, as it has been over you know many years now around the world, uh, and now it will be continue to be told here and in other places, I'm sure, uh, is being used as a uh, a platform to promote kindness and compassion and the importance of it. 
I wanted to tell this story. Uh, following 9-11, it was these communities that made me so proud to be a Canadian. And I had this idea to share this story as a musical. It used to not be such a great idea, but it became a great one. And David and Irene were such an instrumental part in telling that story. Um, and my hope was that it could be a cultural ambassador for the world uh, and for this province. And it's beyond my wildest of wild dreams uh, that Come From Away has been shared with the world. It is now an accomplishment of another dream to bring the show home and to have the world intentionally come back to this community um, to celebrate what was found <laughs> while remembering what happened on that day. And Come From Away is uh, a marker of that memory, which is important to so many people that were impacted uh, on that day. And it's also a marker of the humanity and kindness and community and love that you showed. I don't know about you, but I, for one, am excited that Come From Away is coming back. I've seen it once, and it's great. But right now, let's go to the West Coast, to the Connecting the Dots conference that was held in Cornerbrook, where it talks about technology in the workplace. Let's see what they have to say. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Thank you for joining us here today in this beautiful location, or virtually to share in a very important conversation. I'm Sarah Power, the Media and Information Officer with the NL Workforce Innovation Center, or NLWIC as we call ourselves, and I'm gonna be your moderator this evening. I hope you're all comfortable because we've put together a really interesting and well-rounded panel today, and I think we're in for some really good discussion. When TechNL reached out to NLWIC to see if we were interested in collaborating on an Innovation Week partner event, we jumped on the opportunity because we believe this, gathering, collaborating, networking, and engaging with each other's ideas and opportunities is so important for the growth of our communities and our workforce. And so here we are during Small Business Week as well, which is very fitting, I think. You all know why we're here to hear from experts, our panelists, to participate in discussion and idea exchange and engage and network with everyone in this room who is interested in the same thing, connecting the dots between tech and workforce innovation in Western Newfoundland. And before we get underway, in the spirit of truth and reconciliation, we would like to respectfully acknowledge the land which we live and work as the ancestral homelands of the Mi'kmaq and the Beothic peoples. We also recognize the Inuit and the Innu as the original people of Labrador. We offer our respects to all our indigenous cultures and recognize their continued connection to the land. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, technology, workforce uh, innovation, and also share a couple of um, opportunities that I see for um, um, Western Newfoundland on, uh, around technology. So first of all, um, my role is uh, CEO of TechNL, and TechNL is uh, an association that has been in existence for about uh, 30 years, and uh, we represent the uh, technology uh, sector and work with um, governments, um, post-secondary institutions, companies to, to, to grow the tech sector in the, in the, in the province. Our uh, purpose is to um, uh, enable a thriving innovation-driven economy in Newfoundland and Labrador. And uh, not only in St. John's, but actually throughout Newfoundland and Labrador. So just, just want to be uh, specific on this. And our vision is to become the most sought after um, technology ecosystem. Our vision for the province is to become the most sought after uh, technology ecosystem, uh, playing on three strengths that we see. Uh, first is the uh, collaborative um, uh, culture in the province, but also we want to uh, grow diversity in the province in all its forms. And uh, finally, um, playing, as I mentioned, on the, uh, the amazing quality of life and the view that we have here, I, I, I do think, because I'm not from here, so I can say that, it's, it's really something that distinguishes this place from other places. And uh, you know, I had multiple chances to, uh, to leave the place, but I, I'm still here and I love it because it's an amazing place, amazing people, and, and great to play, place to, uh, to raise a family and live. Um, for uh, people in the room that are interested working in the tech sector, and I know, as I mentioned, there are a couple of uh, CNA students uh, that might be interested to, uh, to work. I just wanted to, to give you a snap snapshot of the different roles that are currently posted. So we took a, a, a snapshot of uh, all the roles that have been posted as of yesterday. Um, and we had like 109 uh, jobs that were posted by tech companies 
uh, by 24 uh, companies in the province. And when you look at the, um, the, the type of uh, role, um, most of the 32% of the position were based in St. John's. But at the same time, 25% were remote positions. And for me, that's where is the opportunity. And in, in today's world, you can work from anywhere. And if you should choose a place where you want to work, I think you should choose a place like this. So with the, uh, that, our mandate, uh, we were established in 2017 by the government of Newfoundland and Labrador uh, to be administered by the College of the North Atlantic and um, with the uh, funding from the Department of Immigration, Population Growth and Skills under the Canada Newfoundland and Labrador Labour Market Development Agreement. Our mandate was really uh, a provincial one. It was to provide that coordinated central point of access to engage all of the labour market stakeholders to look at what are the issues and challenges and hopefully solutions in workforce innovation labour market challenges. And so it's very key, but our goal continues to be to research and test and share m innovative models or models of innovation and workforce development that can have a positive impact on employability, employment, and entrepreneurship. So it's all about that, those ideas and connecting the dots between ideas, innovation, and impact. We bring together and engage a network of labor market stakeholders. Um, to identify opportunities for research and, as I said, what are the challenges, opportunities and solutions to workforce development that will increase a diverse and, and uh, inclusive workforce across the province in rural as well as in urban Newfoundland and Labrador. And we've done lots of things. Today is one, as I said, we're pre I'm presenting tomorrow in St. John's at another forced, uh, Newfoundland Labrador forced sector um, summit. And we do a lot of those presentations looking at telling, t not only talking about what we do, but more importantly, the results of what we do. A lot of times uh, our research projects and other consultations and the other activities that we're engaged in. Project goals. Uh, basically, we want to serve as a driver for innovation in